Hey, I'm Carbo Brotherhood. Really excited to introduce the Marlin 60 Trigger Job Bundle for your Marlin 60. One of the best pro performance upgrades you can do for your Marlin, giving it a fantastic trigger, giving it a match trigger. If you're a competitive shooter in any sort of apple seed events or anything like that, it's going to give you that edge, that leg up on the competition, help you get that rifleman patch. Putting in the trigger spring kit is going to reduce your trigger pull by 40 to 50 percent. Marlin 60 target trigger, machined 6061 aircraft grade aluminum, hard coat anodized, even has a pre travel adjustment screw to take out that creep and slop in the trigger pull. Not to mention we include two recoil springs, so your standard velocity recoil spring, anything from 1100 to 1200 feet per second for ammunition, and then your hyper velocity recoil spring, anything from 1400 feet per second on up for ammo. A couple other must-haves, the Marlin 60 Eclipse. You got to have a few of these on hand, especially when you do the installation. Not to mention when we do open up some of these older firearms, you'll see these Eclipse just fall right off. Next up, patented grease by Superlube. It's got PTFE, which is actually a fancy way of saying Teflon. So it's a Teflon grease. We apply this to the sear and hammer engagement surface to reduce that friction, further enhance the trigger pull. Before we go any further, let's check our Marlins together, make sure they're clear. Go ahead and charge the bolt, lock it to the rear, check the chamber, check the bolt face, and then check the magazine tube. You can see the orange tip of that magazine tube rod, and you can also see the black cartridge lifter. This firearm's clear. Now we're going to go ahead and insert a snap cap, not to insult anyone's intelligence, but just in case this is your first rim fire. The reason we're doing that is because, well, the firing pin strikes the rim of the cartridge. That's how it actually makes the round go off. The primer is in the actual rim itself. So what we want to do is to avoid any unnecessary damage to the firing pin. So what we'll do is we'll actually insert this snap cap into the chamber here manually, which can be a little bit of a pain. There it goes. And what that will do is it'll help prevent any unnecessary damage to the actual firing pin itself. Now let's go ahead and see what the factory trigger pull is. Five pounds, 14 ounces. Now we'll go ahead and take one more to confirm, reinsert our snap cap. Five pounds, 11 ounces. Parts and tools needed for this build, Marlin 60 trigger spring kit, Marlin 60 target trigger, hyper velocity recoil spring, standard velocity recoil spring, Marlin Eclipse, synthetic Teflon grease, medium sized flathead screwdriver, small sized flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers, 1 16th inch punch, 9 64 inch hex key, a paper clip with a bend in it, block of wood with a hole in it, a hammer, and a sheet of sandpaper. Now let's go ahead and jump into the disassembly. We take our 964 Allen key, and we start with the front and rear takedown screws. We want to separate the receiver and the barrel from the stock. So we'll start with the front here first. The front screw will be the shorter one of the two. And we now we'll take out the rear screw. If you've got an older Marlin, it's likely that these will be flathead tipped. So you'll just end up using your flathead screwdriver. Here's the rear screw. So the rear screw is much longer than the front screw. Go ahead and lift up on the barrel. Separate the receiver and barrel from the stock. Go ahead and set the barrel and receiver to the side for the moment. We'll go ahead and pull out this trigger guard first. You need your flathead screwdriver, the smaller one. You'll notice that there's a trigger guard nut at the top of this screw that's holding it in place. So it'll help just put your finger on there so that you're able to back off that screw. Then remove the trigger guard nut, then pull the trigger guard right out. Now we're going to go ahead and replace the factory trigger and trigger return spring. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to push these pins from right to left, so towards the fire side on the safety. So starting with the forward pin, we're going to end up pushing that pin out down through the hole in the block. That's why it's handy to have. Now put your finger on top of that trigger return spring, pull out your punch, and go ahead and remove that factory trigger return spring just to keep it from flying all over the place. Now we're gonna go ahead and press out the rear pin from right to left. And use your hammer if you need to. In this case, it was just real easy to push it through. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the punch and pull the trigger right out. Now let's go ahead and remove our Marlin 60 trigger spring kit. Set that aside, go ahead and remove our Marlin 60 795 target trigger.
Look at that. Machine built aluminum, 6061 aircraft grade. Beautiful. Black hard coat anodized. Now this pre-travel adjustment screw will adjust that momentarily. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall everything first and wait till the end to adjust that. But take our trigger and our trigger return spring. You'll see here when you open up your spring kit, you'll have your hammer spring, your sear spring, it's got the long leg on it, and then you've got two disconnector springs, they're the gold colored springs, and then you've got your trigger return spring, looks exactly like that. So trigger return spring, two disconnector springs, your sear spring, and your hammer spring. So we're going to take that trigger return spring and install that first. Go ahead and just throw the rest of these back in the bag for now so I don't get them mixed up. So what we'll do, put the M-Carbo trigger return spring just down there on the block. What we'll do is go ahead and position our target trigger. We'll take that skinny pin, the small skinny pin, and take the deformed end here. All right, hold on to the deformed end, but we're gonna insert the smooth end. We're gonna insert the smooth end on the left side, the fire side with the safety. Once we get it lined up, I'm just gonna push right through. Now you can also press down on your block of wood to help assist it through. So we're just pushing the smooth end through. We're not pushing the deformed end. That would tear up the trigger guard. So we're going to take the smooth end once again on the left side, the fire side. We're going to go ahead and get it started. Then we're going to take our M-Carbo trigger return spring and place it right into the notch there. And just hold it with your index finger and make sure you got it all lined up. Get it started and then go ahead and position the trigger accordingly so that the pin will go through the hole in the trigger as well and go ahead and push it through. Now you can see there's a little resistance there. It's just easy to press down on the block of wood. Make sure they're flush. Still got a little bit sticking out. Go ahead and give it just a slight tap with your hammer. Nothing, nothing much, just enough to kind of level it out. Oh, perfect. We've got no pins sticking through on either side. Trigger return springs in there. Let's go ahead and test it. Nice. Put safety on. Safety functions. Excellent. Now that's all we need to do on the trigger guard for now. Let us know if you guys would be interested in us doing an aluminum trigger guard for the Marlin 60. Leave it in a comment below. We appreciate it. Let's go ahead and set this trigger guard aside for now. Let's go ahead and grab the receiver with the action. This is what we want to remove. Go ahead and press out the assembly post here. You can take your small screwdriver just to pry it out, push it through, and pry the remainder out. There's a plastic assembly post. Be delicate with that. Go ahead and just pull your action up and out. Go ahead and set the receiver aside for now. Let's focus on that action there. Now let's go ahead and take your paper clip with that slight little bend in it. We're going to attack this hammer first. Actually, the hammer strut is where we're going to slip this little bend of the paper clip through right there. What we want to do is contain the energy of the hammer. So we've got our paper clip in there. Make sure you hold it in good. Flip it over. I'm going to push down on the hammer and pull forward on that sear and then slowly let it forward. And now you can see we've got the energy contained there on the hammer. Now we're going to go ahead and remove these three small E clips here. Take your flathead screwdriver. Be careful, these will fly off. Now remember, with this bundle you'll have some spares, so you're good there. Once you've removed all the E-clips, let's go ahead and just press this ejector lifter spring to the side. Now we'll go ahead and take the extension spring down here and we'll pop that off as well. Just take your punch, pry it off. Okay, now it'll come off nice and easy. So go ahead and just lift up on that side plate. Set that to the side. Now you can see that since we removed those springs it helped lighten the explosion a little bit. Everything's still fairly intact so that's what we want. 
we don't want everything go all, going all over the place. So you got your feed throat here, you've got your cartridge lifter here, you've got your hammer here, hammer spring, you got your hammer strut underneath that spring, and then you got your hammer strut bridge here, your disconnector is back here. This is what the trigger actually pushes up against to push that sear and then release that hammer. You got your sear right here, you got your lifter ejector spring here, your sear spring right here, disconnector spring here, and that little extension spring went flying around, it's right there. So that's the lay of the land there on the inside of the Marlin 60 action. So we'll go ahead and disassemble this. It'd be best to keep it together, but not a big deal. Just remember how it all interacts with one another. Set these aside. Go ahead and remove your ejector lifter spring. Go ahead and remove your buffer. Go ahead and remove your hammer. You have to actually take your punch and pull back on that sear. There's still tension on it. So get your hammer, pull that out, set that aside. Go ahead and lift up on that sear spring, the long leg of it to release it. You can see how this extension spring sits on top of the sear spring. That's good to pay attention to. Then you can also see how the sear spring sits in here up against the sear. That kind of hook shape sits flush like so. So we'll go ahead and remove the sear with the extension spring and the sear spring. Set those aside. Now we're going to focus on the disconnector and the disconnector spring. Now go ahead and take a look at your disconnector and disconnector spring. You can see how that disconnector spring sits quite a ways off that side plate. I mean it's it's on there, but there's some space between it. The goal is we're going to try to get ours nice and flush against the side plate. So disconnector spring, well, it's best just to remove it with a set of pliers. You can see it's kind of got a bend in it there. So I'm going to have to flatten that out just a little bit. OK, set that aside. Here's a bird's eye view of all the parts from the inside of the action on the Marlin 60. This is what you should have laying in front of you right now. A couple of these parts I can go ahead and put away. I've got a little stock bag that I'm working with right now. You can see I've got the trigger and trigger return spring in there, factory parts. Go ahead and I'm going to take this factory sear spring, keep that. Go ahead and keep this factory disconnector spring. You never know, good to have spare parts on hand. Go ahead and take our M Carbo spring kit. We're going to go ahead and start installing some of these pieces immediately starting with the disconnector spring. Now we've got two of them and we've got two of them for a good reason. This is the hardest spring to install. Don't let it intimidate you. It's not a big deal. It just takes a second to get used to. Let's go ahead and jump in and put these in. So take your gold disconnector spring. Looks just like this. There's two of them. What we're going to do is we're going to insert this little leg right here into the disconnector itself. See that? Just hooks right in behind it real nice. Then this long leg, we're going to stick in that little hole on the side plate there. So the goal is to get it nice and flush against the side plate because we don't want it to interfere with anything. All right, so the way we do that, keep your finger on the spring and then take your thumb and just push down on it. Nice and tight. You'll get a really good 45 degree bend just like that. Still got my index finger on the other side, keeping it flush against the plate. Now I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and I'm going to put a 45 degree bend into it. So it's two 45 degree bends. It helps if you get just the tip of the needle nose pliers in the center like that. You can see, I'll probably go a little bit less than that. You want some narrow pliers if you've got them. It'll really help because it's such a small little bit of space that you're working with there. So go ahead and put another 45 degree bend into it. Now take your pliers and get them underneath the plate and we're going to pull down like so. We're going to pull down like that. So we're going to get a little tension on it and we're going to pull it down. See that? It's kind of that motion. You're not pressing it down. You're getting it just kind of flattened against the side. And that way there, look at that. You've got an exit. You can see I was pressing pretty, pretty good on it. Keep some good tension on it. So you, look at that. That disconnector spring is flush. I mean, that thing is nice. Now it doesn't have to be as flush as that. You can see how the factory disconnector was a little bit off of the side plate. It's just ideal. So that's why we give you two. 
if you mess up the first one you'll definitely get it by the second one so just make sure it functions perfect now we're going to go ahead and replace the hammer spring this is when we're going to use that sheet of sandpaper right here it's going to help you get a little more grip on the part itself so it doesn't slide out of your way now one thing i want you to take notice is the way that this hammer strut bridge is actually oriented you can see here that this little special cutout is on the left side so the left side of the hammer right the way it's oriented like so so you can see the way it's oriented this little portion here is always on the left side so just something to consider and take notice of you're gonna just press down all right get a good grip on it and this is why we're wearing eye pro too so you go ahead and remove that paper clip pull out the hammer strut bridge go ahead and remove the hammer spring set that in your stock bag of springs I like to keep this hammer strut bridge oriented properly like so go ahead and grab the Imcarbo hammer spring here I'm going to take that slide that on top of the hammer strut all right now go ahead and take our hammer strut bridge set it on top I'm going to push down everything's lined up take your paper clip and slide it right through the top all right once you have that paper clip through it's containing all that energy and we're good to go you can see that little stair step is on the left side on the hammer strut bridge good now we're going to start putting the action back together so go ahead and take your hammer and go ahead and take your synthetic grease with PTFE the Teflon grease that came with your bundle go ahead and coat that sear hammer engagement surface real well it's that little notch in there that's where the sear actually sits on the hammer and go ahead and coat both of these sides where the hammer goes onto the side plates give it a nice bit of lubricity there so go ahead and take notice that this little special stair cut is going down right it's going to go into that hole there this little portion into that hole and then the hammer is going to slide right on this top pin it slides right on the top pin into that hole boom perfect now go ahead and take your sear the extension spring and grab your imcarbo sear spring That'll be the last of the springs okay take a little bit of that synthetic grease and we're going to put a little bit on the back side of that sear just to give it a little extra lubricity as it's rubbing up against that side plate okay the sear is going to go down like so the sear spring is going to go on like this remember that little hook is facing up so place the sear on that bottom pin then we're going to place the sear spring on the pin as well and then I'm slowly lowering the sear a little bit and now I'm going to put the extension spring on top of that post and we've got all three parts on the same post like so now what we're going to do is make sure that hammer is all the way seated sears all the way seated now we're going to push that long leg of the sear spring around this post put some tension on it and push it all the way down now that we've got our hammer and our hammer spring we got our sear sear spring extension spring disconnector spring all installed before we go any further you really want to make sure that sear is fully flush with the side plate here it's a little misleading because sometimes it'll look like it is you're going to need to make sure you've got enough pin exposure here for the other side plate so just make sure that sear is fully flush against the side plate go ahead and take your ejector lifter spring and install it on that post go ahead and take your feed throat and your cartridge lifter and we're going to install those together and as one complete unit feed throat is going to sit in these two holes here and the cartridge lifter on this top pin just like that you can see that hammer strut it's kind of a little wiggling it's not really secure just yet 
it will be. Go ahead and take your buffer, place that on the rear pin here. Go ahead and take the other side plate. You got your bolt release lever. Go ahead and line up all these holes with these pins here. Those six pins. I guarantee you that hammer strut pin is going to give you a little grief, so you just got to take your punch and kind of get it lined up. Everything else, fairly straightforward. You'll know once you got enough room in there, you'll be able to feel it all compress. Here's a close up view though. You're going to have these tabs sticking out. These tabs aren't sticking out, they're not going to offer you enough real estate for those E clips to fit on. You know, you have to check your alignment, but this is what we're looking for here. Go ahead and take your new E-clips. It's always good to replace these. You can only really take them off so many times before they just completely wear out. And then they're no good. And then it's kind of misleading. You think your side plates are secure, but they're really not. They'll just, E-clips will just fall off inside. I've seen it many a times. So put the new E-clips on. Now we're going to take our small screwdriver and we're going to attack this ejector lifter spring. First, we're going to get it to lay in that track right here on the feed throat, like so. Now we're going to take the screwdriver we're going to push this little leg down underneath the cartridge lifter. We also want it to get underneath the bolt release here as well. So it's going to be underneath two things. There you go. So you just got to push it all the way through like so. You'll see on the back side here, it's underneath the cartridge lifter and the bolt release here flush alongside the plate. That's important. So you just you can push it to the side a little bit if it's not all the way there. But that's how it should be riding, right underneath the cartridge lifter and the bolt release. It's in the groove there on the feed throat as well. Awesome. That's what we want. Last but not least, that extension spring. See that? Just hanging out loose. You want to get that on the bolt release. We're going to take our needle nose pliers, just get the very tip of it there, pull it forward. There we go. Pops right on. There we go. Bolt release functions. Cartridge lifter functions. Excellent. Now, we can go ahead and pull our hammer back. Excellent, that locks. Pull out that little paper clip. Perfect, look at that. Go ahead and give it a good look over. We've got our three E-clips installed. All the posts are in the proper holes on both sides. You can see that we've got a functioning cartridge lifter there. And our bolt release is functioning as well. You can see we've got our hammer spring installed, we've got our disconnector spring installed, our sear springs installed properly, our extension spring is connected properly. You can see that our cartridge lifter spring is in its proper position here underneath. It's under both levers and it's also in the groove up here on the feed throat as well. Excellent, this action is ready to be reassembled. Let's go ahead and set the action aside grab the barrel and receiver. Let's go ahead and remove this magazine tube follower first. Just unlock it up front and just pull it right out. That way there we don't have to worry about any interference. Now we're going to go ahead and replace that recoil spring. I'm going to install the hypervelocity recoil spring. So what we want to do is slightly pull back on the bolt and we're going to just lift up with our index finger there to remove the charging handle. Now what we want to do is carefully let the bolt come up and out of the receiver. We don't want to kink this recoil spring down here. So we're going to kind of lift up with this finger on that recoil spring and guide. There we go. Okay. Still good, didn't damage it. So you got your recoil spring guide here and you got your recoil spring. We're going to set that aside, that factory recoil spring. Just want to point out real quick, you've got your firing pin here, so if you ever need to replace your firing pin, it's just a matter of tapping out this pin here and reinserting the new one. So not a 
huge undertaking, especially if you're doing all of this, you might as well, especially if it's an old firearm. Uh, in this instance, we've got a brand new Marlin here, I'm not going to bother with it. Take our hyper velocity recoil spring, go ahead and put our recoil spring guide into the hyper velocity recoil spring. Now, what we want to do is compress the recoil spring into the bolt, right? So at least enough to where this recoil spring guide is almost completely inserted. So what we're going to do is we're going to push straight down on this spring so that it goes all the way up inside the bolt, lay it flat, and then light it forward. So tilt it upward, push straight down, get that pin and that spring to go all the way up inside the bolt at least a majority of it. Then we're going to lower the bolt forward and down. Still leave enough space so we can get our charging handle in there. Then take your flathead screwdriver and just help yourself get it the rest of the way in. There we go. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and reinsert the action, but before we do, we need to pull the bolt back and lock it to the rear. So put some pressure down with your thumb on the bolt, pull back, and push down on the charging handle. Bolts lock back to the rear. Now go ahead and take the action and make sure you lead with these tabs first. They're going to rest underneath this pin here. Falls right into place. Now we're going to take the assembly post, that little plastic pin, drop it into this hole here. Perfect. Now you can go ahead and take your magazine tube rod and insert that back into the magazine tube. Lock it in place. We're going to actually mock this up so that we can test the pre-travel adjustment on the trigger. So go ahead and just put the receiver and barrel into the stock. Make sure it's fully seated. Grab your trigger guard. Now let's go ahead and adjust the pre-travel on the target trigger. You're going to need a 1 16th inch Allen key. Go ahead and back off that set screw first. We're going to apply some thread locker, blue Loctite to it. Got about four threads showing right there. Just a little dab. We just don't want this screw to back itself off once we get it set perfectly. So go ahead and now run it forward. If you got any excess on there like I just did, go ahead and wipe it off now. Now what we want to do is get a maximum of three threads exposed on the forward end. This is the forward end here. This is what's going to be contacting the disconnector inside the action. So you can see one, two, three. I've got three threads there exposed. No more than that. Okay, so we're going to test the maximum first. So go ahead and drop the trigger assembly into the stock. Okay, now we're not going to put any screws in it yet, just hold it all together. But we are going to insert a snap cap before we dry fire it. Go ahead and drop your snap cap into place, aka dummy round. Ride the bolt forward. All right, now we're going to test the trigger pull. But what is most important, we're going to make sure the safety is functioning. So really, before we do any sort of trigger pull testing, let's test that pre-travel adjustment. So go ahead and put the weapon on safe, pull the trigger. Excellent. Doesn't go off. That's what we want. Now I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment just for the sake of making one, just to show you what you would do if it did go off on safe. You actually come back to your pre-travel adjustment screw. You would reduce that length to two threads. So now we've only got two threads exposed on the tip of that target trigger. So it should be should be right where we want it now. So go ahead and test it again. It's on safe. Doesn't fire. Excellent. Go ahead and put it on fire. Perfect. Now that the safety functions properly, we need to go ahead and install the front trigger guard screw and nut first. 
So we actually need to remove the barrel and receiver. Set those aside. Go ahead and grab that trigger guard nut and screw the short one. Get it started. Keep pressure on the assembly, tighten it up. Now the trigger guard's mounted to the stock. Excellent. Go ahead and insert the receiver and barrel into the stock. Perfect. Now we're going to take the long screw that goes in the rear, take the short screw that goes in the front. Go ahead and start with the front screw. Just got a hand tight. Now I'm going to finish up my Allen key. If you've got an older Marlin, it's likely going to be a flathead screwdriver. Tighten up the rear screw. Be careful not to over tighten these, but you do want to make sure they're fairly snug. Now look at that real trigger on this Marlin here. Brand new black hard coat anodized billet aluminum target trigger for the Marlin 60. Quite an improvement. Smooth blade, no serrated lines, so it's gonna be a nice comfortable trigger. Easier to find that sweet spot and maintain it with each subsequent trigger pull. Can't wait. Let's see what kind of trigger pull we got now. All right, let's take a couple trigger pull readings and see what our modified trigger pull is now. Three pounds, 13.1 ounces. That is awesome. Let's take one more to confirm. Reinsert the snap cap. Three pounds, 10.6 ounces. That is awesome. About a 40 to 50% trigger pull reduction. There you have it guys, outstanding. As always, happy shooting.